You ready to worship Jesus? I've asked Brother Yoon to open in prayer. Hallelujah. 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 We want Jesus' kingdom in our midst. Let Jesus' kingdom come in our hearts just as it is in heaven. The word of God to us is no matter if there are storms or plagues or disasters in our land. And if the people who are called by, by my name repent of their sins and turn from their wicked ways, yet I will hear and receive their prayers and I will heal their land. In the last two years, the entire world has been afflicted by all sorts of sicknesses and storms. And tonight I'm extending an invitation to everybody in this place who has been born again to kneel together with me now and pray for God's healing in this land and for all those who are bound by a spirit of fear because of these things. In the name of Jesus, we cry out to you, Lord Jesus, and we are willing to repent before you and confess our sins. We cry out to you, Lord, heal our land, heal our people. We cry out to you, Lord. We want to see your glory. We do not want to be a people from whom your glory has turned away. We want to become the people of the next generation who will be the Samuels, who will speak words of wisdom. We proclaim a new generation, an Ebenezer generation that remembers what you have done, O Lord, in our midst. Tonight, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would anoint everybody who is worshiping you here, whether they are speaking your words or singing your song, playing your worship, open up. A, a river of your spirit in our midst. 
，我们奉耶稣的名宣告，一个荣耀复兴的林浪口已经淋到了。And we proclaim that your revival has come to us tonight. Come to this land. Come to America. We proclaim Jesus' name and declare that your kingdom has come to this country. 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 And let this country see again a revival of repentance. Let this country see what it looks like—a revival that is turned towards Your glory. From Jesus Christ's name, Hallelujah! In Jesus' name, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!
take us deep, deeper than what we've known, deeper than what we've known. I pray that a spirit of worship would come on us, a spirit of worship would come on us, and a sustained praise would begin to pour out of us. Lord Jesus, we are here for your glory. We are alive for your glory. We are we're born into this moment because you determined it and you predestined it, and we are alive for your glory tonight. So come in your power. Come upon your people tonight. Come upon them for worship. Come upon them with boldness. Come upon them for declaration. Come upon your people tonight. darkest day in history there are As the heavens
tonight. Begin to lift your voice to Jesus tonight. Praise! Worthy is the Lamb! Worthy is the Lamb! Worthy is the King of Kings! The soon returning King of Kings! Worthy! 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 Glorify 
There's only one word that comes to mind. Only one word to describe. There's only one word that comes to mind. Only one word to describe. Oh.
just one more time, just lift voices. Lift your voices to the Lord. Keep singing. Just a little longer, louder.
Yes, Jesus. Keep singing. Yes, Father, we sing up to you, my Father, our Father. Holy, 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 we are singing with them now. Holy, yes. Holy, we sing with you, great King. You're the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, yes. going. This is a holy moment. We join with all of heaven. Lord God Almighty. Holy. Lord God. A wonderful, beautiful. Father, we're singing tonight the very perfection of Scripture. This is the song that heaven has on loudspeaker. This is the song, this is the perfection of Scripture. This is the greatest description all of heaven could find. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. All of heaven, they couldn't find a better word. Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord, holy, yes, is the Lord God Almighty.
wonderful, beautiful. Yes, you are, Jesus. You are so holy, great King. You are so holy, great King. You are so wonderful, Jesus. We've flown from around the world. We've come from many nations, many places. But it's our greatest joy just to tell you that you're the Holy One. You are the Holy One. You are the prophesied Messiah. You are the King of Israel and the King of the universe. You are the Holy of Holies. You are the Holy One, resurrected King, glorious in might, marvelous in splendor. There is none besides you. There is no one like you. You are holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty who was and who is and who will soon return as the King of glory. So we say, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. We don't care about the schedule. We care about you being here. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. We've set a table for you. The table is our hearts, God. It's our very hearts. Come and dine with us. Be with us. Break off your life and show us who you are. We came here. Open our heart, King Jesus, to see how wonderful and truly beautiful you are. How worth laying aside every false thing you are. How worth turning our back on every broken relationship you are. How worth laying down all earthly glory just to say we know you. Just to simply say, I know my King. I know Him and His name is Jesus. Come on, if you love Him, tell Him you love Him. Tell Him you love Him. We love you, Jesus. Come on, that's not enough. <laughs> There's more in us than that. Tell Him you love Him. He's the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. He's all that God intended. He is the King of glory. God in flesh, one and only Son, how can we describe You? How can we possibly put words that can calculate the greatness of Your glory? All we can say is a simple word but it sums up your entire being. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Come on, before you sit down, before you get seated, I want you, before we get comfortable, let's be as wild as we can and shout to the King of glory and tell Him and all of heaven that we love Him above all things.
as loud as you can, say it with me. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Yes. Praise you, God. Praise your holy name. Praise you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm usually good at landing the plane, but this plane is not coming down. His glory is all over this place. I'm sure if you're watching all over the world through the TV, you feel it. You can feel His glory. He is here. He is with us. Hallelujah. You might be seated. <laughs> I bet you some of you feel like, I don't know about you, but I feel like a rocket going off inside me. I just want to jump because I, I can feel that fire of the Spirit of the Lord. And God is here. Some of you may have come here by invitation. A friend may have invited you and you're like, what is going on, man? These people are crazy. <laughs> it's true. We're guilty. We admit it. We are bananas for Jesus. We are but we're bananas for Him for a reason. It's because our life has been touched and transformed. It's because of this thing on my left-hand side that back in the Roman times, they called an execution method of torture. If you were hung on a cross, in fact, Rome itself, when they invented the crucifixion, they actually said no Roman will ever be crucified because it's too gruesome, it's too damning, and too shaming. So they made their own citizens exempt from this, as wicked as they could be, even if they murdered 100 people. Nobody went to the cross, only the worst, only the most guilty, the one that they, they would call the most outcast of society was placed on a cross. And I know somebody who was placed on that cross 2,000 years ago, but he wasn't an outcast and he wasn't guilty. In fact, the scriptures call him Heaven's royal diadem, the greatest, most precious thing of God. He is the will of God in a flesh. That is the man who loved us enough, as John chapter 3, 16 says, that gave his only son, God, gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Not just to say, hi, here I am as a person, but to give himself to a cross, to be shamed, to be beaten, to be pierced, to have lashes of his skin, torn off him, all because of his love for humanity. And tonight, by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the scriptures that preach better than any man, I pray that your heart, no matter where you came from, whether you believe in God, whether you're an atheist, whether you have no religion at all, or whether you've fallen away from the King, that you would see how great his love is and that he would die for your sin, that he would pay blood to show you that he loves you. And let me tell you something, guys. Every drop of that blood screams, I love you. It doesn't just scream, I love the world. It screams, I love you personally. He knows you personally tonight. And it's no mistake and no coincidence that you're here. God bring you to this field. So I'm just going to pray. And then I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Romans. Holy Spirit, I ask you to do what only you can do. Tear the veil from our hearts. Show us the beauty, the amazing radiance of the person of Jesus Christ and the power of his cross. And I pray, Father God, that any person that was brought here or watching live, that you would save those ones that you bring and you would show them that they've been destined to eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles, please, to Romans chapter one. Who's got their Bible? Can you hold it up real quick? That's wonderful, many Bibles. Who's got an iPhone type of Bible? Praise the Lord. And we have a deliverance tent for those who have a Samsung. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. Let's start with verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his holy, sorry, through his prophets in the holy scriptures. Everything we're going to talk about tonight was a fulfillment of a promise. Verse 3, concerning His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power by the Spirit, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of the dead. Then he said, through him we've received grace and apostleship and obedience to the faith among all nations. You hear what Paul said? This is written to you by a person who was formerly an accuser of Christ. He was a person who in his mind had summed up the fact that he didn't need Christ or that Jesus wasn't the Messiah. In fact, he was so zealous that he spent his days trying to disprove this very verse. He spent his hours trying to debate with people and even persecute people that believed what you and I may believe. But this man had some kind of a change of heart, some kind of turnaround, not just a minor one, so radical that he would say that this person was the one that all of Scripture spoke of. He's the one prophesied to come. He's the one who was risen from the dead. He's the Messiah, but that by him the whole world would be saved. The Jews looked for the son of David. They prayed, Messiah come. But sadly, when he came, many of their hearts were hardened. Many of their eyes were blinded because they believed in their own righteousness. They believed in their own ability to forgive sin. They believed they could do their best for God. God would see their best and reward them with righteousness. But how many of you understand there's no one in this crowd or watching online who's ever met a person that is truly perfect? Can anybody here place their hand up if you're sure that from zero to the age you are now, you've never sinned? Someone please show us the way of perfection. Well, that's the heart cry of all humanity. Actually, something inside of us is always saying, there must be a better way because there is a better way. I meet many people though on the streets who believe they don't need a better way. They believe their way is a good way. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart, there's no God, I don't need a God. That man's foolish because he believes that in his small brain and in the limited life he gets that he understands all the creation of the universe and he's sum totaled in his mind, there's not a God. It's a foolish way of thinking and I meet many, many people. They say to me, Ben, I say, hey, Jesus loves you. God has a plan for you. I tell them on the street sometimes. They say, well, I don't need God. They say, I'm, I'm a good person. And I say, what does that mean? They say, well, I haven't robbed a bank. I haven't stolen a million dollars. See, sometimes good is the estimation of our own determination of good. But I say to them sometimes things like this, I go, I understand that. But where does sin begin? Where does evil begin? Does it begin when you murder someone or when you think about it? What about your thoughts? What about the inner man? How do you live on the inside when nobody sees you? I remember someone told me a story recently about a very kind man. He became very, very old. All his life he was kind. But as he got to his last years of his life, it was like somebody touched a button inside of him and the button was called bitterness. Every day he was angry, cussing, cursing. He couldn't help it. All this stuff that he stuffed down for years had to come up to the surface. Because as much as we believe that we don't have evil or we're not sinful or we don't need a Messiah, as much as we stuff it down, Maybe we put alcohol down our throat to stuff it down even further. Maybe it's something we do, our job. Maybe it's an idol of, wow, look amazing, how amazing I am at sports. Whatever it might be, when we push it down, it doesn't take yet but a while for it to rise up to the surface. And once again, you find that mankind, even in their best efforts, is frailly, cripply broken. But these people tell me on the streets, they say, Ben, I'm a pretty good person. I don't rob a bank. I say, okay, you haven't stolen a million dollars. But what if you took a dollar, would that be bad? Of course that'd be bad, but it's not really that bad, it's just a dollar. Yeah, but what if you took a dollar every hour of your life, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 a year, for the rest of your life, you would steal almost a million dollars. See, sin isn't what we do that's big, sin is what we do every day in our heart, in our mind. It's little, but sadly the bank account keeps getting deeper. The condemnation keeps getting thicker and we keep needing more stuff to, put, to, to, to try and choke this down and to get us into a place where we believe we're okay. But God sees our heart. The scripture says that the Lord looks on the heart of man. He sees into every human life, into every human heart. And you may not have robbed a bank, but the times you've thought about sleeping with somebody else's wife, that has gone into the bank. And the Lord sees it. 
But what is the response of God to sin? See, all have sinned and fallen short of His glory. Romans 3.23 says, the Scripture makes it clear. There is no one righteous, not one. It says not even one heart can purely seek God. Well, what does that mean? Can people seek the Lord? Of course. But can they do it from innocence? No. We'd be doing it to escape. We'd be doing it to feel better about ourselves. There's no one who can truly seek the Lord without the kindness of God opening his eyes. And how does God see sin? God sees that sin needs a just punishment. What kind of a God would say to you, I don't care about people that raped people? What kind of a person would just pat people on the back and say it's totally fine to continue in this evil, this hiddenness of darkness, the way that you speak to your wife, the way that you're full of anger, it's totally fine. I don't want a God like that because that God has no standards. That God doesn't care about humanity. That God cares just about human choice. But human choice, as you know, is the reason we have a one in two divorce rate. It's the reason major percentages of Western nations have turned against God because in their mind, their free will choice says, I don't need God. Until they get old, until a tragedy happens. And all of a sudden, people look for a cross. People look for a cross. It's one of the number one things tattooed on people in the whole earth is a cross. It's the reason they put it at the top of every medical thing. They know a cross brings healing. There's something innate in the human mind that says there's something special about the cross. But what's special and life-giving for us, what we search for, costs somebody a great deal. And God chose in His mercy, even though we're sinning, even though we're walking around going, I'm a good guy, I'm a great guy. But then we think about somebody else's wife or we lie. God in His mercy looked on the depravity of human beings, on our life, and He didn't say, here's a plan I can do. I can judge them. I can condemn them. Here's my plan. I'll just crush them all. No, no, no. But He knew there had to be a judgment. Someone had to pay the price. And that's why the Scripture that I said earlier is so much deeper than the bumper sticker we've seen on the car. When He says, God so loved you, God so saw you, God so longed for you. In the book of Luke, when it says the Son of Man came to seek and save, the word seek there is craved you. God craved you. He didn't crave judgment. He craved mercy. But somebody in the likeness of fallen human beings had to pay a price for fallen beings human sin. He paid on His cross that was really our cross. He paid a debt He didn't owe because you couldn't pay the debt you owed. And people say, well, the Jews crucified Jesus. No, they didn't. It wasn't the Jews. We all partook of this crucifixion. I remember when I was a kid, my mom was a godly woman. And I remember she used to talk all the time about God and I believed in God as a kid. But I remember one time I saw her wallet open and something came over me. Even though I was a good kid, I used to read the Bible and I was a good kid, you know, six, seven years old, but I saw her wallet open and some kind of draw in a six or seven year old. How does that draw take place? It's sin. Some sort of draw drew me to her wallet and I began at six and seven years of age to begin to steal. Did my mom forgive me? Yes. But it showed me that inside human beings, even kids, there's some price that must be paid for the innate sin in our lives, and that price was the cross of Calvary. It says this of the crucifixion. You know the word excruciating? That's where we get the word crucify, from excruciate. It was the worst beating, the most shameful beating anybody could go go through. You know when Jesus was handed the coin from Caesar, he said, give to Caesar what's Caesar's and to God what's God's, because he saw the inscription of Caesar on the coin. Well, God saw the inscription of sin on you. And instead of putting it on us, He put it on Jesus. He made Him become sin. He never did any wrong. He was innocent, never sinned, holy, pure as an offering for our life. But He actually became it for our life. So that as many as turn to God will be saved. You've heard the story about the the auctioneer who auctioned this massive inheritance that he wanted to give away. And he had all this stuff in his inheritance. 
He had all these amazing chandeliers. He had all this gold, everything in the whole house was open. The father had died, the son had died, and his inheritance was there. They were selling off his inheritance. And amidst all of this amazing treasure was a beautiful painting of his son. People walked past it all day. They saw it as something they don't need, but they wanted the chandelier. They wanted the gold watch. They wanted everything else. But this one person saw the son's face and felt like there was such beauty in the son. They saw this picture and it's like, this picture is so beautiful. Who is that boy? And the person holding the papers said, oh, sir, that's the son of the man who oversees all this inheritance. And he says, that, piece of, uh, that, uh, that picture, it's only selling for a small price. And that man said, I want it. I like the look of that, that boy's face. There's something special about this painting. He purchased it. And as he took it, the man said to him, congratulations, friend. And he said, what do you mean? He said, the father said in his will, whoever sees and treasures the look of my son, the face of my son shall have all the treasure that is in my house. Because he said yes to the son, he received everything that he was meant for, which was the full inheritance. And get me, let me tell you guys this, humans are not meant to play games, attacking each other, cheating on each other, living to just swallow their, their pain through booze. We're meant to receive glory from God because Romans says we fell short of glory. And there's only one way to receive that glory. Romans says in Romans chapter four, it says to as many as received him, he gave them the right to become children of God. But the question is, will you receive him? See, your punishment was already paid for. Your sin was already taken. Everything you ever did wrong was swallowed up in Jesus so that everything that he has as an inheritance could be yours. But you have to admit it to yourself, you need a Messiah. Do you know that you need him tonight? Some of you know, but do you really, really know? I wanna finish with this verse, then I wanna pray with you. You don't have to turn there, I'll just read it out to you. At the end of Romans, in chapter 14, and this is powerful, guys, because this is the very word of God. This is what established the entire universe. It says this, verse 10, but why do you judge your brother? Why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For as it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. And he ends it with this. So then, each of us shall give an account for his life before God. God doesn't want you to give an account where your bank is full of sin. He doesn't want you to give an account of your deposits of adultery, your deposits of pornography. He doesn't want you to give an account of your deposit of pride, saying I don't need God. God doesn't want you to give an account. He wants to bankrupt it because he bankrupted Jesus on the cross for you. He wants you to have everything that Jesus paid for. And Jesus went into the depths of hell. He destroyed the power of death and he's risen from the dead. And he will return. But he won't return for those who are not his. The painting is worth too much. The face is worth too much to the Father. Him, His glory, it's worth too much to God. But sometimes with us, we think it's cheap. We think we don't need the cross. Heaven celebrates the cross. Their attention daily is on what He did in the cross. Hell is terrified of the cross. Hell knows it can turn souls, accusers, into the greatest men of God. Hell's afraid. The only people that seem to have complacency to the cross is human beings. But it's what you need. My question is this. Are you ready to stand before God and give an account for your life? If you stood tonight on the way home, I never would speak tragedy over you. I speak blessing over you. But every day people die. My friend's father just died tragically in three days. But right before he died, he said yes to Jesus. My question for you tonight is this. If you're sitting here and you know, yeah, I know God, or I know about God, or maybe I believe in God, but you know in your bank, in your spirit, in your soul, in the way you do life, in the inner man, you've deposited darkness. You can't get it out. You can't smoke it out. You can't get a better job to take it out. 
is only one person. The innocent, pure blood of the Holy Son of God who came in the likeness of man, became like us, walked with us, and loved you enough to die for you. His blood screams to you tonight, I love you, come and be made free. But what would you say to God if you stood tonight, even if you're a backslidden Christian? What would you say? People tell me, Ben, in America especially, they say, Ben, I, I believe in God. That's not enough. Satan believes in God, but Satan doesn't live with God. Satan doesn't act like God. The proof of your belief is that Jesus becomes your life. But tonight, if you stood in front of God, would he be the one who says, the account's empty, it's full of the treasure of Jesus? Or would he say, I see, the account is still full. You're still living for you. What would he say to you, friend? And that's the question you must ask right now. Why is it so important? It's not just so important. It's eternally, forever, the most important thing you'll ever do because God created you. And you're making a choice. I will go with my creator or I'll go with my corrupt bank account. And our corruption takes us one place only. Sin, death, and eventually hell. But you weren't born for hell. You were born to be with God. Would you please close your eyes? This is a holy, holy moment. I went two or three minutes over, I'm so sorry, but, but this is so holy. I can sense the presence of Jesus. I can feel his love for you right now. Can you feel him? Can you feel his mercy? Can you feel him? Saying, come, let me empty out your sin let me fill you, give you a brand new life. If you know you're standing here today, sitting here today, and your life is not right with Jesus Christ, whether you never met God before, very first time, or you didn't believe before, but right now the Spirit of God is opening your eyes, or if you're a Christian and you've said in your heart, it doesn't matter how I live, but the Spirit of the Lord is pressing you in this very moment. He's pressing you because He's drawing you. If that is you, I want you to forget human opinion. Don't care about what anybody thinks of you. Right now, as fast as you can, if you want to be right with Jesus, if you want to give your life to God, stand up in your seat. As fast as you can. Stand up in your seat. Keep standing. There's many, many people standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. There's many, many people. All the way up the back, there's a whole row of people up there. I'm going to ask again. If you know, if you know inside, I've been living in compromise. I have not been living for Jesus. I want you to stand to your feet right now. Heaven is looking at us. Heaven is watching us. Oh, God bless you. Give these guys a hand. Come on. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit just whispered in me, said, Ben, ask one more time. Keep standing for all those who stood. There's hundreds across this, this whole park right now. But the Spirit of God just said to me, ask one more time. Because some of you feel that feeling of like, but someone next to me thinks I'm a great person. Someone next to me or someone here knows me. They think I'm a really godly man. Guys, don't protect your reputation. Don't protect anything except your relationship with Jesus. I ask you one more time, if you know the Spirit of God is calling you to give everything to Jesus tonight, to turn your back on sin, stand as fast as you can. Oh, look at that, many more, many more. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Keep standing, keep standing. Keep standing. There's many more, keep coming. There's, there's more that keep standing up. Oh, praise the Lord. Come on, guys. This is the greatest victory. <laughs> yes. Would you look at me, everybody who's standing? I wanna tell you something. Right now, Jesus' heart is swelling. He's looking at each one of your faces. His heart, His eyes are probably full of tears, full of a smile looking at you saying, yes, saying, I have you in my arms. The Bible says all of heaven right now they get time off.
because they have the biggest party because your life is now in the hands of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. This is amazing. The Scripture is clear that if anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away and as many as have received Jesus, to them He gives the right to become children of God. Let's pray. Pastor Michael's gonna pray with me. Let's pray right now. God is not looking for a special prayer. God doesn't speak Spanish. He doesn't speak English. He speaks heart. He's looking for your heart to speak. He wants you to talk from the innermost being and make it simple. Just say this, Lord Jesus, I confess that I have sinned against You. I've gone my own way. But tonight, I call on You to forgive me. I believe that You died for my sin, that You were crucified for me, and that You went down into hell. You destroyed the power of sin. You destroyed the power of Satan and the Father rose you from the dead. And tonight, resurrected King, I invite you officially to become the Lord of my life. Enter me now, make me a brand new creation and fill me with the Holy Spirit. Okay, everybody around, just point your hand toward them. Just pray God, fill them right now. Transform their life right now. This is so beautiful. Transform them. Pray for them right now. And if you're watching at home and you know this message is for you, please don't play games with God. This is a divine appointment. You turned on at the right time. God is calling you, friend. You're special to Jesus. He died for you. Get on your knees in your house and say, Jesus, I wanna come back to you. God will give you the same freedom. Let's just pray out loud. 30 more seconds. Let's pray. Blessing over them. Break off all the things of the past. May they become completely brand new tonight. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, King Jesus. Praise You, Father God. Praise You. Praise You. Praise You, Great King. Thank You, my Lord. Just another 10 seconds. It's holy, holy what's happening right now. It's holy, so beautiful. It's like when a child's being born. There's such a mystery about it, but it's so beautiful. God is birthing your spirit, friend. Whoever you are standing here, you're being washed clean. You're being made completely new tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill them, Lord. Make all things new. All things new. Okay, look at me just for one minute. If you said yes to the Lord Jesus tonight, you invited Him in. The Scripture says this right now, right as you stand there. You have become in this very moment, God has birthed you. He's conceived you. Your, your sins are all dead. They are gone. You are completely clean. The, the Bible says you right now are a child of God. You're a child of God. You're free. <laughs> Come on, we can do better than that. Let's praise the blood of Jesus. I, I want us to all I want us to all stand and mirror heaven and give Jesus a sacrificial praise. Come on, lift your voice. Thank you, Jesus, for every soul. For those of you who stood or you wish you did, I just want everyone to remain standing for a moment. You can fall more and more in love with Jesus every day. 
you do not ever have to turn your back or backslide or live in a place in a way that you don't sense his presence every single day you can fall more and more and more in love but before you sit back down there's a few things I want to encourage you to do number one read your Bible every day that goes for the whole crowd read your Bible every day this is true food true bread but Jesus said man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God the scriptures are food the scriptures are a matter truly of life and death read your Bible every day number two pray every single day many of you probably grew up hearing that prayer is a price for something better but if prayer is being with Jesus then prayer is not the price prayer is the reward and I want to encourage everyone here to go into your room daily and close the door and be with the Lord like a little child. And if you don't know how to pray, He'll teach you gladly, I promise. Thirdly, be baptized in water. Oh, water baptism is powerful. And the old man stays in the water and you're cut off, the scripture says, from a perverse generation. The old man in an old life. And that water becomes a tomb that you burst forth from dead to the sin, dead to sin in the world, and alive in Jesus. Say amen. amen. Fourthly, find a church and don't attend. Become the church. Give your heart to the Lord with a people and then give your heart to a people as well. We would love to, to serve you at Jesus' image, but there are some amazing churches in this city. Find a church that loves the whole Bible. Notice I said the whole Bible from cover to cover. Number two, find a church that loves the presence of the Lord because the presence of the Lord is the Lord himself. Okay? And lastly, Ben already prayed that you would receive the power of the Holy Spirit. In just a few moments, Pastor Claudio Frazan is going to come and teach on the Holy Spirit and pray that this entire crowd be filled again or maybe for the first time with the power of the Holy Spirit. But I believe we have more Jesus on the screen. Hopefully it's up there. I can't see it. If you want to walk with the Lord more closely and you'd like us to help serve you in that capacity, just text more Jesus to that number on your screen. We love you so much. God bless you. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Come on. Jessica. Would you welcome my wonderful wife, Jessica, to the platform? Thank you. You guys can be seated. That was beautiful. So we're going to continue the act of worship right now by offering. I'm going to say that again. That should excite you because when we give to the Lord, that is an act of worship. It is a joy and honor to give to Jesus. Amen? You know, I was worshiping as, as Jeremy was, was worshiping Jesus right there in my seat. And I was looking and I could see the moon over there. And I was just thinking, how beautiful are you, Jesus? How majestic are you? How wonderful are you? And I just felt, I heard the scripture in my heart. And this is not the offering scripture. This is the scripture I fail to share with you right now. You don't have to turn there, but it's in Matthew 6. Verse 26, it says, Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? I think some of you need a revelation of how much the Father really loves you. He loves you so, so much. And he will take care of your every need. So just posture your heart right now to receive that. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 21, 22. I was reading the Bible a few years ago and the revelation the Lord gave me in the scripture just, just blew my mind. If you can turn there. This was after King David took the census and disobeyed God. David said to Arana, let me buy this threshing floor from you at its full price. Then I will build an altar to the Lord there so that he will stop the plague 
Take it, my lord the king, and use it as you wish. Arana said to David, I will give the oxen for the burnt offering and the altar and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give it all to you, but listen to this part. But King David replied to Arana, no, I insist on buying it for the full price. I will not take what is yours and give it to the Lord. I will not present burnt offerings that have cost me nothing. See, it's gonna have to cost you something. And that doesn't mean finances, that means your life. And if Jesus doesn't have your finances, let me tell you, in love, he does not have all of you. It's gonna cost you something. And that's why I love this passage so much. And this is the spot. This is what the Lord showed me years ago when I was digging in the scriptures. This is the spot where King Solomon, David's son, built the temple. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 3.1. So Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to David, his father. The temple was built on the threshing floor. Are you hearing this? On the threshing floor of Arana, the site that David had selected. See, your place of sacrifice will become your place of praise. I'll say that again. Your place of sacrifice will become your place of praise. And I'm gonna just gonna speak really open with you right now, because that's just how I am. <laughs> but this cost us a lot. This was a dream in our heart years ago. In 2014, we started Jesus Conference. We had nothing. We didn't have a staff. It was just Michael and myself. Our office was our master bedroom. That was the only quiet place away from our children. But we took a step of faith because Jesus said to do it. And we said yes, and we gave our all to him. And doing these things cost money. Your tickets only cover a portion of the cost. Just to be transparent, this event cost $675,000. It's a joy to do it for Jesus. I'm gonna say that again. It's a joy to do it for Jesus. And we felt to open up the nights for free because we want the loss to get saved. And we knew that that would cost us something, but it didn't matter because we want the lost to get saved, the sick to get healed, and the bound to get set free. And so currently, we need about $300,000 more dollars to cover our costs. And I believe that Jesus is gonna bring that all in right now in Jesus' name. If this was your event, you would have cheered a little bit louder. I believe that Jesus is gonna bring all of that in right now today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, this is not our event, this is his event and we do it unto the Lord. So let's pray right now, just bow your heads. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, it is our joy to give to you, Jesus. Lord, I ask that you give us cheerful hearts to give. Lord, you did so much for us, Jesus. You gave us your life on the cross. So it is our joy to give you all that we have, Jesus, to give you our time, to give you our first fruits, Jesus, to give you our families, God, our finances, God. So Holy Spirit, right now, speak to your people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that every need will be met in the name of Jesus. We love you. Amen. Amen. You can text GIVE to the number on the screen. If you are watching online, we love our online family. We do not charge to have you guys tune in online because we want the whole world to be a part of what the Lord is doing here. If Jesus' image has blessed you, if you're being blessed, we also invite you to GIVE. You can text GIVE to the number on your screen. If you need an envelope, please raise your hands. Keep them up high. Our ushers are gonna be walking around to give you an envelope. Keep them up high, they will come to you. If you wanna give by cash or check, if you're watching online and you want to mail in an offering, the PO box will come on the screen. We love you, thank you so much. We will be back in just a moment. Oh, holy night, the stars are they shining It is the night Of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world In sin and error Finding Till he appears and the soul 
Spirit. He's a man that loves Jesus, and he's a man who's impacted myself, the nations of the world, and our family personally. One of the most significant encounters I've ever had with the Lord took place when Pastor Claudio prayed for me. So I want us all to posture our hearts right now, and all of us to honor a friend of God and a gift to the body of Christ and the nations. Please welcome Pastor Claudio Frazen. Jesus 21. Hi, how are you? We feel the fire of God tonight. And uh, tonight we also, we are expecting for more. And my language is not 
of course, the English. I am coming from Argentina. I speak Spanish. And I like to, to share with you a few words in English. I've been practicing this for many months, <laughs> just for greet you. And uh, I came yesterday from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And uh, we, I, I want to say thank you, Michael, Jess, and the whole team, because they are working hard and for prepare this for tonight and, and for tomorrow. And I know that it's going to be this time. I don't know if you receive a touch of God before, but I believe that you are going to leave this place totally changed. And, and this is the atmosphere, because it's Jesus is here. And if we are talking about the Holy Spirit, when you meet the Holy Spirit, you can't back home the same person. You can start a new year with the same problems in your heart that you, you had all these past years. Something fresh, something new, something, something from... Uh, the Holy Spirit is coming today. So, I want to introduce my dear interpreter, Orlando, because uh, years ago I came with my daughter, Daniela, and my family, but she couldn't come, and we have a best, too. How are you? Como estas? Doing great, Pastor. Do you want Thank to you. work as an interpreter, or I can do it in, Sp in English, too? Whatever you want, I'm here to serve. Hallelujah! ¿Cuántos quieren el poder de Dios en su vida hoy? How many of you want the power of God in your life today? Vamos a please lift your hands and uh, and pray for me for the beginning of this uh, moment. Padre, te damos gracias. Lord, we Lord, thank you. We want to know the Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to know the Holy Spirit tonight here. This is the people who came here with hungry Thursday. They need you, Lord. They need you, Lord. And I pray for a fresh release of the Holy Spirit. Touch them. Tócalos allí donde están. Enciéndelos con el fuego de Dios. Fire them up with the fire of God. Que ellos hoy experimenten la gloria de Dios en su asiento. That they might experience the glory of God in their seats. Que sientan al Espíritu Santo descender sobre ellos. That they will feel the Holy Spirit descending upon them. Tócalos una vez más. Touch them one more time. Touch them one more time and use them. Use them with the power of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, the fire is here. The fire is here. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here. We are looking for the fresh release, fresh anointing fresh anointing you will receive it you will receive it I can feel it años atrás years ago estuve en un auditorio I was in an auditorium en un lugar muy lejano al, al escenario in a place very far from the scenery. Yo viajé porque quería tener un encuentro personal con el Espíritu Santo. And I traveled to that far place because I wanted to have a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. Era pastor. I was a pastor. Tenía una hermosa iglesia. I had a beautiful church. Pero sé que había una dimensión. But I knew there was a higher dimension. 
Había una dimensión que yo no conocía. There was a dimension that I did not know. Y el Señor me dijo. And the Lord spoke to me. Cuando estaba en el estadio. When I was at the stadium. He told me very clear. Do you want it? And I said, Señor, yo viajé desde muy lejos. And I said, Lord, I came from far away. Para recibir. To receive. Y el Señor otra vez me preguntó, ¿lo quieres? And the Lord one more time asked ¿Quieres me, conocerme? Do you want to? Do you want to know me? ¿Quieres experimentar mi presencia en tu vida como nunca antes? Do you want to experience my presence in your life as never before? And I said, yes, Lord, I want it. Y él me dio un, me dijo una sola palabra. And then he gave me one word. Just one word. And Just he, one word. He told me here in U.S. He told me in Spanish. He said to me, "Ríndete. Surrender. Surrender. So lift your hands and pray and say, Lord, I surrender to you." Me, me rindo, reconozco que tú eres. I surrender to you and I recognize you. Mi rey, mi señor. That you are my king and my lord. Y yo vine a esto, a este tiempo aquí en Jesus. And I came to this moment here. Porque quiero conocer al Espíritu Santo. Because I want to know the Holy Spirit. Quiero conocer a Jesús. I want to know Jesus. Conozco una religión. I know a religion. But I want you. I want you. Y si usted ora de esa manera, and if you pray that way, el Señor va a soplar sobre su vida. The Lord will breathe upon your life. Y lo va a llenar con su poder. And He's going to fill you with His power. Y cuando salga de aquí. And when you leave this place, vas a impactar esta generación. You are going to touch this generation. Padre, yo te pido que así suceda. Father, I pray that that will be done. Todos los que vinieron en derrota, all of you who came in failure, se levanten. Will rise up. Aquellos que vinieron caídos, those who came down, se levanten. Will rise up. Aquellos que no tenían fuerzas. Those who came without strength para buscarte, to seek your face. Te pido que les des nueva fuerza. I pray that you give them new strength. Nueva autoridad. New authority. Nueva pasión. New passion. Hallelujah. Haz algo grande aquí en Orlando hoy. Do something great in Orlando today. Hoy, hoy queremos ver la gloria de Dios aquí. Today, tonight we want to see the glory of God here. Ahora. Now. Ahora. Now. Ahora, 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 ahora. Now, 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 now. En el nombre de Jesús. In the name of Jesus. Puede dar un aplauso fuerte al Señor. Give Jesus a big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Puede tomar asiento. You can take your seats. Cuando estaba hablando recién de impactar, de, de ser transformados. When I was talking about that being transformed. Vino a mi mente la mujer samaritana. The Samaritan woman came to my mind. Cuando ella se encontró con Jesús. When, he, when she had an encounter with Jesus. Y cuando Jesús le dijo, si conocieras, and when Jesus told her, if you just know, ¿quién te dice dame de beber? Who is that is asking you to give him to drink? Tú le pedirías. You will ask him. Y él te daría. And he will give you agua viva, living water. Esa mujer, 
that woman. Tuvo un encuentro y una revelación de Jesús. She had an encounter and a revelation of Jesus. Que los habitantes de Israel no habían tenido hasta ahora. That the inhabitants of Israel did not know. Porque ella entendió en ese momento. Because she understood at that moment. Que Jesús era el Cristo. That Jesus is the Christ. Que Jesús era el Mesías. That Jesus was the Messiah. Algunos en Israel todavía se preguntaban si era verdad que Some Jesús era el Mesías. Some in Israel were still asking if he was the Messiah. Pero ella, al estar frente a Jesús, but when she was in front of Jesus, su vida fue transformada. Her life was transformed. Cuando volvió a la ciudad, when she came to the city, ella le dijo a los habitantes de la ciudad, she told the inhabitants of the city, encontré al Cristo al Mesías. I found the Christ, the Messiah. Y la ciudad se conmovió. And the city was moved. Todos quisieron venir a ver a Jesús. And all wanted to come to see Jesus. Y lo que yo quiero decirles, and what I want to tell you, que cuando esas personas that when those people de la ciudad vinieron a Jesús, from the city came to Jesus creyeron en él, they believed in him y lo invitaron a él a la ciudad, and then they invited him to the city y le pidieron que se quede dos días, and then they asked him to stay two days en Samaria, in Samaria Jesús se quedó dos días en Samaria con esa Gente que no lo conocía. Jesus stayed in Samaria for two days with people that did not know him. Todo eso ocurrió. All of that happened por una mujer because of one woman que fue impactada that was impacted por la persona de Jesús by the presence of Jesus. Yo quiero decirles algo. And I want to tell you esa something. Misma unción, that same anointing. Esa misma that same revelation. Es lo que que tener it's what we have to be thirsty about. Lo más de este tiempo, the most important thing in this time. No ocurre cuando estamos aquí durante estos días. Doesn't take place just because we are here during these days. Lo más importante va a ocurrir. The most important thing will happen Cuando vuelvas a tu casa. when you come back home. Cuando vuelvas a tu ciudad. When you come to your city. Cuando vuelvas a tus amigos. When you return to your friends. Cuando lleves la revelación de lo que sucedió en tu vida hoy aquí. When you bring that revelation of what happened to your life today. No importa lo que ha sucedido hasta otra. It, do, it, doesn't, hasta hace un tiempo atrás. it doesn't matter what happened in the past. Viene un nuevo tiempo. It's a new time coming. El mundo desde hace dos años. The world since two years ago. Está pasando una crisis global. It's going through a global crisis. Lo que ha sucedido con la pandemia. What's happening with the pandemic. Con las iglesias. With the churches. Con toda la lo que ha transformado en la mente y en el corazón de las familias y de las personas. And how the minds and families and people have been transformed. El dolor, el sufrimiento, la Inseguridad. The pain and the suffering, the uncertainty. El sentirse que uno es vulnerable. People have felt vulnerable. Nos hace más dependientes de Dios. That should create dependence on God. Y el Señor te dice. And the Lord tells you. En estos peores años. In these worst of times. Van a ser los años donde voy a revelar mi gloria a la iglesia. These are the years where I'm going to reveal my glory to the church. ¿Y sabes por qué viajé? And you know why I travel? Tantas horas de Argentina. So many hours from Argentina. Con todo lo que significa hoy viajar en avión con tantas limitaciones. With everything that it means to travel today with all the limitations. Porque Dios puso en mi corazón. Because God placed in my heart. Que en estos días. That in these days. Se van a abrir los cielos. The heavens will open. Y yo no sé cómo has llegado. And I don't know how you've come. Pero lo que ha pasado en generaciones pasadas. But what's happened in generations past. Las las uh, generaciones anteriores que experimentaron un avivamiento. Past generation that did experience revival. Esta generación de jóvenes. This generation of young people. Ustedes. You. Los que están mirando online. Those who are watching online. Los que están allí atrás de todos. Those are who are behind. Ustedes están ahora en un nuevo tiempo de Dios. There is a new time from God for you. Dios lo hará otra vez. God will do it again. 
Él mostrará su poder y su Espíritu Santo a esta generación otra vez. And he will show his power and his Holy Spirit to this generation again. ¿Cuántos lo creen? How many of you believe it? Otra vez. One more time. Diga conmigo once again. Muchos de ustedes años atrás. Many of you years ago. Tal vez experimentaron la pasión por Dios. Maybe you experienced passion for God. Años atrás sintieron al Espíritu Santo cerca de ustedes. Years ago you might have felt the Holy Spirit closer to you. Estaban más comprometidos con la iglesia. You were more committed with the church. Tenían el corazón ardiendo para Dios todo el día. And your heart was burning for God every day. Pero tal vez Diferentes situaciones los ha enfriado. But maybe different situations have made you cold. Y el corazón en vez de estar abierto a Dios. And the heart rather than being open to God. Se endureció. Became harder. Pero dice la escritura. But the Bible says. En Isaías capítulo 43. In Isaiah chapter 43. Versículo 19. Verse 19. He aquí yo hago cosa nueva. For I am about to do something new. Pronto saldrá a la luz. See, I have already begun. No la conoceréis. Do you not see it? Otra vez. Again. Again. Otra vez abriré camino en el desierto. Again, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. Y otra vez ríos en la soledad. And again, I will create rivers in dry wasteland. En Isaías 44:3. In Isaiah 44:3, dice, it says, "Yo derramaré agua sobre el sequedal, because I will put out water upon the wasteland, y ríos sobre la tierra árida, and rivers upon dry deserts and lands. Mi espíritu derramaré sobre tu generación, I will put out my spirit upon generation, y mi bendición sobre tus renuevos, and my blessings upon your children. Dios te dice otra vez. God is saying to you again. Hoy otra vez. Today, once tal, again. Tal vez ustedes están viviendo un desierto. Maybe you're living through a desert. Pero Dios dice. But the Lord says. Voy a cambiar tu desierto. I will change your desert. Voy a transformar tu Sequedal. I will transform the wasteland. Viene el mover del Espíritu Santo sobre tu vida, sobre tu casa y sobre tu familia. There comes the movement of the Holy Spirit upon your life, upon your homes and upon your families. La tierra seca. The wasteland. Tal vez te sientes como tierra seca y árida. Maybe you feel dry like a dry land. Pero el Señor te dice. But the Lord says, Voy a hacer llover mi espíritu. I will cause my spirit to rain upon you. Voy a derramar tu espí mi espíritu sobre tu vida. I will put up my spirit upon your life. Otra vez. One more time. Otra vez. Once again. Dios te va a ungir otra vez. The Lord will anoint you one more time. Dios te va a levantar otra vez. God will raise you up one more time. Dios te va a llenar de la unción otra vez. God is going to fill you with the anointing otra one more time. Otra vez te vas a levantar. One more time you will raise up. Otra vez vas a ver maravillas. One more time. You You will see marvels. Otra vez vas a ver ese deseo y tener esa pasión por servirle. One more time you will have that passion to serve him. Aleluya. El Señor te dice, vienen lluvias sobre tu tierra seca. The Lord says, there comes the rain upon your dry land. Eso es el Espíritu Santo. That is the Holy Spirit. El Espíritu Santo hace que lo, lo cerrado se abra. The Holy Spirit makes that which is closed to be open. Lo que no da fruto comienza a dar fruto. That which is unfruitful to become fruitful. Ya no vas a vivir la vida cristiana con tus fuerzas. You will no longer live your Christian life by your own strength. Va a ser la fuerza de Dios en tu vida. It's going to be the power of God in your life. Es el fruto del Espíritu Santo. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. La obediencia. Obedience. Amor. Love. Gozo. Joy. Todas las áreas de tu vida. In every area of your life. Van a ser transformadas. Those are going to be transformed. Por el Espíritu Santo. By the Holy Spirit. La clave de todo en la vida de Jesús. The key 
for to Jesus. La clave de todo en la vida de Jesús. The main key in everything for Jesus life. Fue la comunión con el Padre. It was his communion with the Father. Y fue el momento cuando el Espíritu Santo vino sobre él. And it was that moment when the Holy Spirit came upon him. Escuche. Listen. Jesús no sanó. Jesus did not heal. No predicó. He did not preach. No cumplió con su misión de he, llevar las buenas noticias a los pobres. He did not fulfill his mission to bring the good news to the poor. Hasta que no fue lleno del Espíritu Santo. Until he was filled by the Holy Spirit. Y si Jesús necesitó esperar. And if Jesus needed to wait. Al Espíritu Santo descender sobre él. For the Holy Spirit to come upon him. ¿Cómo nosotros vamos a vivir la vida sin caminar con el Espíritu Santo? How come we want to live life without walking with the Holy Spirit? La vida cristiana no es en tu capacidad humana. You don't live your Christian life at your own capacity. No es la obra de Dios no se realiza con estrategias humanas. The works of God are not fulfilled by human strategy. Es el poder de Dios en It tu vida. It is the power of God in your life. Y en momentos más vamos a orar. And in, in just a few moments we will pray. Para que todos sean llenos. So that all of you will be filled. Y que puedas volver a la ciudad como esa mujer volvió a Sicar. So that you can come back to the city like that woman. Y cuando habló esa mujer que no tenía una gran eh, reputación, que no, que no la miraban bien. And that woman that has no such a good reputation. No era una persona que, las per que no la conocían porque sabían el estilo de vida que tenía. She was a person that people knew her lifestyle. Sin embargo, cuando ella vino después de haber contactado a Jesús. But when she returned to the city after touching Jesus. Después de haber hablado con Jesús. After she spoke with Jesus. Algo pasó en ella. Something happened in her. Y es mi oración que todos sean llenos. And it is my prayer that all of you will be filled. Isaías profetizó acerca del equipamiento de, del Espíritu Santo Isaiah en la vida. Isaiah prophesied about the equipping of the Holy Spirit. En la vida del Mesías. In the life of the Messiah. En Isaías 42. In Isaiah 42. Versículo 1. Verse 1. Dicen. It says. Miren a mi siervo. Here is my servant. A quien yo Fortalezco. Whom I uphold. Está hablando de Jesús. He's talking about Jesus. Está profetizando, está hablando acerca de lo que iba a suceder con Jesús. He's prophesying and speaking about what were going to happen with Jesus. Y dice, yo lo fortalezco porque es mi elegido. And he says, I have strengthened him because he's my chosen. ¿Quién me complace? He pleases me. He puesto sobre él mi espíritu. I will put my spirit on him. Y hará justicia a las naciones. And he will bring justice to the nations. El padre dice del hijo. The father says about his son. A mi siervo. My servant. Yo lo voy a sostener. I will sustain him. Yo lo voy a equipar. I will equip him. Y yo lo voy a enviar. And I will send him. Esto se desprende de este pasaje. This comes from this passage. Así como ocurrió con Jesús. In the same way it happened with Jesus. Así el Señor quiere que ocurra en cada uno de nosotros. That is how the Lord wants it to happen to each of us. Cuando viene el Espíritu Santo a nuestra vida. When the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. Nos sostiene. He sustains us. Cuando viene el Espíritu Santo sobre nuestra vida. When the Holy Spirit comes into our lives. Nos equipa. He equips us. Con su autoridad. With his authority. Con todo lo que hay en, la, en, el, en el cielo, en nuestros corazones. With everything from heaven in our hearts. Y nos dirige. And he guides us. Y nos guía. And he guides us. Para hacer el propósito de Dios. To fulfill God's purpose. Dios te va a sostener. God will sustain you. La palabra sostener. The word sustenance significa que te da tu, su apoyo. Means that he gives you all of his cuando, support. Cuando tienes al Espíritu Santo, Dios te va a sostener en toda situación. When you have the Holy Spirit, God will sustain you in every situation. Puedes estar pasando diferentes tormentas. You may go into different storms. Pero él va a ayudarte a que la tormenta no entre a tu corazón. But he will make sure that the, the storm doesn't touch your heart. Puedes tener 
tormentas alrededor. You may have storms all over you. Pero las tormentas no van a entrar a tu corazón. But the storms are not going to come into your heart. Porque el Señor te sostiene. Because the Lord is sustaining you. El Señor te sostiene. The Lord is sustaining you. Te fortalece. You. He is strengthening you. Te equipa. He is equipping you. Te da el Espíritu Santo. He is giving you the Holy Spirit. La palabra Espíritu. The word Spirit. Que habla Isaías. That the prophet Isaiah is referring to. Es el, el verbo rúa. La palabra rúa. Is the, es soplar. Is the word rúa that means to breathe. Cuando tenemos al Espíritu Santo. When we have the Holy Spirit. El poderoso mover creativo de Dios viene a nuestras vidas. The powerful and creative power of God comes into our lives. El Señor nos guía. The Lord begins to guide us. Nos dirige. He begins to lead us. Nos dirige. He leads us. Nos ayuda a hacer su voluntad. He helps us do his will. Eso es lo que produce el Espíritu Santo. That is what comes from the Holy Spirit. Te guía. He will guide you. Te sostiene. He will sustain you. Y te equipa. And he will equip you. Necesitamos equip you. al poder de Dios. We need the power of God. Levante sus manos y diga conmigo. Lift up your hands and say with me. Necesito que Dios me sostenga. I need God's sustenance. Necesito que Dios me guíe. I need for God to guide me. Para hacer la obra que él me encomendó. To do the work that he's purpose for me. Y necesito que Dios me equipe. And I need for God to equip me. Yo no puedo solo. I cannot do it alone. Yo necesito al Espíritu Santo en mi vida. I need the Holy Spirit in my life. Y el Señor dijo del el Padre dijo de And the Jesús. Lord says, the Father says about Jesus. Yes. A mi siervo lo voy a sostener. My servant, I will sustain. Lo voy a equipar. I will equip him. Y lo voy a dirigir. And I will guide him. Y esa palabra es para vos. And that word is for you. El Señor te va a sostener en cada batalla que estás atravesando. The Lord will sustain you in every battle you're going through. La unción está aquí para levantarte, the para sostenerte. The anointing is here to lift you up, to sustain you. Para fortalecerte. To strengthen you. Los cielos están abiertos aquí. The heavens are open here. Algo glorioso está ocurriendo ahora Something mismo. Something glorious is happening right now. Cada uno de ustedes. Every one of you. Están siendo ministrados por el poder del Espíritu. Is being ministered by the power of the Spirit. Que te fortalece. That is strengthening you. Que te guía. He is guiding you. Y que te equipa. And that he's equipping you. Lo que no tienes. What you don't have. Él te lo va a dar. He will give it to you. Lo que te falta. What you're lacking. Él te lo va a dar. He will give it to you. El poder de Dios. The power of God. En la vida de Jesús. In the life of Jesus. En Lucas capítulo 4. Puede tomar asiento un momento. You may be seated in Luke chapter 4. En Lucas capítulo 4 versículo 14 dice In Luke chapter 4 verse 14 says Entonces Jesús regresó a Galilea lleno del poder del Espíritu Santo Then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the power of the Spirit Las noticias acerca de él corrieron rápidamente en la región And news about him spread through the whole countryside Y luego Jesús cuando entró a la sinagoga And then when Jesus went to the synagogue Tomó el libro de he, Isaías He took the book of Isaiah Y lo leyó diciendo And he read it and it says El espíritu del Señor está sobre mí The spirit of the Lord is of me Porque me ha ungido Because he has anointed para me Para llevar buena nueva a los pobres To proclaim good news to the poor Me ha enviado a proclamar libertad a los Oprimidos. He has sent me to proclaim freedom y que to the los prisoners vean and recovery of sight to the que blind. Los oprimidos sean puestos en libertad. To set the oppressed free. Y que ha llegado el tiempo del favor de Dios. And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Y luego en el versículo 21. And then in verse 21. Me gusta este texto. I like this text. Listen. Cuando él terminó de leer, dice esta palabra, hoy se ha cumplido 
esta escritura delante de vosotros. And then when he finished reading, he said these words: Today, the scriptures is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, cuando Jesús se paró delante de los que estaban en la sinagoga en Nazaret, when Jesus stood in front of those who were in him before him at the synagogue, él les dijo, he said to them, hoy algo está sucediendo aquí. Today something is happening here. Y yo vengo a decirles hoy And I came to tell you today, lo que sucedió hace más de dos mil años atrás. What happened more than 2000 years ago, ese mismo evangelio. That same gospel, esa misma palabra. That same word, ese mismo mensaje. That same message, sigue siendo revela- relevante hoy. Is the same relevant message for today. Esta generación. This generation, muchos desconocen o no creen en el mensaje. Maybe do not know or don't believe in the message. Pero nosotros hoy vinimos a proclamar. But we came here to proclaim que hoy that today se está cumpliendo la palabra de Dios. The word of God is being fulfilled. Y que hoy and that today hoy today algo está sucediendo en Orlando. Something is happening in Orlando. Porque el Espíritu Santo está aquí. Because the Holy Spirit is here. Hoy. Today. Diga conmigo. Today. Said with me. Today. The gospel is for today. The Holy Spirit is for me today. Amen. Dice la Escritura. The Bible says. Que al oír esto de Jesús. That when they heard that from Jesus, la gente se puso furiosa. People became furious. Y se levantaron de un salto y lo atacaron y lo llevaron al borde del cerro para arrojarlo. And they rose and they attacked him and took him in order to kill him. Y él siguió su camino y no lo pudieron tocar. But they weren't able to when Jesus continued his way. Rápidamente, ¿qué nos enseña esto? Right quick, what are we to en, learn en la from vida this de Jesús. about the life of Jesus? Número uno, Number one, así como Jesús, in the same way that Jesus, necesitamos abrirnos al Espíritu Santo. we need to open ourselves to the Holy necesitamos Spirit. Una experiencia con el Espíritu we need Santo. an experience with the Holy Spirit. Hoy, aquí, ahora. Today, here, now. Cuando Jesús se bautizó, when Jesus was baptized, los cielos se abrieron, the heaven opened. Y el Espíritu Santo descendió. And the Holy Spirit descended. Hoy proclamo cielos abiertos sobre tu vida. I proclaim heaven open upon your life. Proclamo cielos abiertos en medio de tus problemas. I proclaim that the heavens are opening upon your troubles. Cielos abiertos para que el Espíritu Santo descienda sobre ti. Heaven is open so that the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Cielos abiertos para que tengas un encuentro con el Señor. Open heaven so that you have an encounter with Jesus. Jesús llegó a Galilea lleno del Espíritu Santo. Jesus went to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit. Necesitamos al Espíritu Santo. We need the Holy Spirit. No es no es algo el Espíritu Santo, es alguien. He is not a thing, he is somebody. Es es una persona que amamos y queremos conocerla cada vez más. He is a person that we love and we want to know him more. Y que queremos tener comunión. And we want to have communion with him. Y queremos recibir y recibir cada vez más. And we want to receive and receive more. El Espíritu Santo vino a darnos la autoridad que no tenemos. The Holy Spirit came to give us the authority that we don't have. La la persona del Espíritu Santo viene a impartirnos la naturaleza del cielo. The person of the Holy Spirit comes to impart the nature of heaven. Lo primero the first thing que aprendemos de este pasaje en Lucas that we learn from this passage in Luke es que así como Jesús is that in the same way that Jesus necesitamos una experiencia personal con el Espíritu we Santo we need a personal experience with the Holy Spirit ¿cuántos quieren tenerla hoy aquí? how many of you want it today? yes Lord esa experiencia nos lleva a lo segundo que dijo Jesús. That experience takes us to the second thing that Jesus said. Dijo, el Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí para dar buenas nuevas a los pobres. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is upon me to give good news me to the poor. Me ha enviado a 
proclamar libertad a los cautivos. He sent me to proclaim freedom to the captives. La pasión de Jesús era compartir a los perdidos el mensaje de el reino de Dios. Jesus' passion was to share the message of the kingdom of God with the lost. Orar por las personas to pray for people que estaban postradas. That were down. Y hoy nosotros necesitamos ese mismo mover y esa misma pasión que tenía Jesús. And today we also need that same power and movement and passion necesitamos that Jesus had. El poder del Espíritu Santo para llevar el poder de Dios a las calles. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to take the power of God to the streets. Hay una generación sedienta. The, I know there is a generation that is thirsty. Que desean caminar con Dios todos and, los días. And they want to walk with God daily. Que am, aman a Dios con todo el corazón. Because they love God with all of their hearts. Creemos que vamos a ver multitudes. We believe that we will see the multitudes. Creemos que vamos a ver cosas grandes. We believe that we will see great things. Creemos que este es el tiempo de Dios para esta generación. We believe that this is God's time for this generation. Esta es la generación. This is the generation. Que le dice el Señor, queremos más de ti. That will say, Lord, we want more of you. Vivimos, vivimos rodeados de personas que no creen. We live surrounded by people that do not believe. Personas enojadas. People who are angry. Personas llenas de ira. People who are very angry. Y para terminar este pasaje, lo que quiero enfatizar al, antes de orar. And what I want to emphasize out of this passage es el momento we pray, en que Jesús, is that moment in which Jesus, al ver la forma en que lo trataban en Nazaret, when he saw how he was treated in Nazareth, y cuando lo llevaron arriba de una colina para empujarlo y no pudieron. And then when they took him to a cliff, then they wanted to throw him, but they were not able to. Dice que atravesó la multitud. The Bible says that he went through the multitude. Y siguió su camino. And he continued his way. La reflexión que quiero decirles hoy. The reflection I want to share with you porque today. Porque el evangelio es para hoy. Because the gospel is for today. Los cielos abiertos en tu vida es para hoy. The heavens opening upon your life that is for now. Pero tenemos que aprender de este pasaje algunas lecciones. But we want to learn some lessons from this passage. Dice la escritura que Jesús se alejó de la incredulidad de Nazaret. The scripture says that Jesus went far away from unbelief in Nazareth. La Biblia nos dice que él siguió su camino. The Bible says that he continued his way. No permitió que la incredulidad de Nazaret. He did not allow unbelief in Nazareth. Se convirtiera en un obstáculo para cumplir su llamado. To become an obstacle for him to fulfill his purpose. No se quedó atrapado en el dolor de los demás. He did not stay in the pains of others. Tal vez ustedes están rodeados de problemas y de personas que no creen. And maybe you are surrounded by troubles and people who have unbelief. Están sufriendo rechazo. And you, have, you might have experienced rejection. Tienen situaciones difíciles en tu vida. Difficult situations have come in your life. Pero cuando viene el poder del Espíritu But Santo. But when the Holy Spirit comes. El Señor te llama a seguir adelante. The Lord calls you to follow up your way. Más allá de lo que está sucediendo alrededor tuyo. And to go beyond what is happening around you. Te va a poder, te va a dar el poder para sostenerte. He will give you power of sustenance. Te va a dar el poder para seguir adelante. He will give you the power to continue on. Pero si el hoy viniste con tristeza y amargura. But if you come today sad. Este es tiempo de imitar lo que hizo Jesús. This is the time to imitate what Jesus did. Nazaret no creyó. Nazaret did not believe. Nazaret, que es el lugar donde él se crió, no, no lo apoyaron. Nazaret, the very place where he was born, when he was raised, did pero, not support him. Pero él siguió su camino. But he continued his way. Agradando al Padre. Pleasing the Father. Hoy el Señor quiere. And today the Lord wants you. Que cada uno de nosotros podamos aferrarnos del Señor. He wants so that, that each and every one of us will cling to Jesus. Más allá de las batallas y luchas que tenemos en casa. Beyond all of the storms and troubles that we have at home. 
y, y en el trabajo y con los amigos. And with all of the works and with friends. El, el Señor te va a fortalecer. He will strengthen you. Para seguir adelante. So that you can continue on. Y cumplir el propósito de Dios. And to fulfill the purpose of God in your Hoy life. Hoy es el momento. Now is the moment. De recibir el toque del cielo. To receive the touch of heaven. ¿Cuántos quieren ser tocados por el Espíritu How Santo? How many of you want to be touched by the Holy Spirit? Cada vez que venimos a un momento como estos Every time we come to a moment such as this Estamos diciéndole Señor acá estoy necesito más de ti We are saying Lord I am here I need more of you Póngase en pie por favor Why don't you stand up please Hoy vamos a orar para que todos puedan ser tocados por el Espíritu Santo And we are going to pray so that everyone is going to be touched by the Holy bautizados. Spirit That everyone is baptized by him que todos puedan experimentar a la persona del Espíritu Santo en casa. That every person will experience the Holy Spirit at home. Que fluya el poder de Dios. That the power of God will flow through you. Levante sus manos y ore conmigo. Lift up your hands and pray with me. Señor, te necesitamos. Lord, we need you. Holy Spirit, we came here because we want to know you. We want to receive from you. We want a fresh relationship, a fresh touch in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, bring the fire for the greatest revival ever. Todo lo que jamás imaginamos. Lo que, lo que nunca imaginamos that which we cannot imagine lo que nunca pensamos what we cannot think on, on ourselves es lo que Dios va a hacer contigo is what God is going to do with you ¿cuántos quieren tener una vida de victoria ahora? how, how many of you want a life of victory now? una vida de comunión a life of communion una vida donde puedan caminar firmes such a life where you can stand firm Padre te pido ahora comienza a derramar tu poder aquí. Father, I pray that you begin to pour out your spirit Fuego right here. Fuego de Dios ahora. Fuego de Dios Fire ahora. Fire of God now. Fuego de Dios ahora. Fire of God now. Lo que has hecho años atrás. What you've done in the past, Lord. Fuego de Dios. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Presence of the Holy Spirit. Presence of the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Lord, every, every person here, every person que reciba, que reciba el poder de lo alto. That every person will receive the power from on high. Ahora. Now. Ahora, Dios, ahora, now, ahora. Now, now, Lord, now. Ahora. Now. Abre los cielos, Señor, abre open los cielos. Open the heavens, Lord, open the heavens. Abre los cielos sobre cada uno de nosotros Open ahora. The heavens upon every one of us now. Abre los cielos. Open the heavens. Derrama tu poder ahora. Put up your power now. Trae el avivamiento. Bring revival. Bring revival tonight. Tonight. Receive it. Take it, take it, take it. Wherever you are right now. Recibelo, recibe, recibe, recibe el poder de Dios. Recibe el poder de Dios. Recibe el bautismo del Espíritu Santo. Recibe el poder del Espíritu Santo en tu vida. Más. More. Queremos más de ti, Señor. We want more of you, Lord. Queremos más de tu persona. We want more of your presence. We want more. We want more, Lord, we want more of the Holy Spirit, more, more. Bring more, Lord, as como nunca antes lo habíamos experimentado. Bring more, Lord, as we have never experienced before. More, more. Keep praying, keep praying for a moment. Keep praying, something is regarding of prayer, pray, pray, pray. Pray, Lord, I pray for the leaders, the pastors. I pray for the young people. 
I pray, I pray, I pray for a fresh touch. I pray, I pray more, more, more. Más fuego. More fire. Más poder. More power. Más autoridad. More authority. Más. More. Más. More. Más, 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 más. More, 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 more. Más, más, más. More, more, more. Allí donde estás atrás de todo. Right there where you are in the back. Take it. Recibe, 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 recibe. Take it. Take it. Es eso en el momento, es el momento. This is the time, this is the es time. Es el momento de la presencia de Dios moviéndose entre nosotros. It is the moment where God's presence is moving among us. Espíritu Santo, diga conmigo. Holy Spirit, say with me. Ven con ven a mi vida, Espíritu Santo. Say with Santo. me, Holy Spirit, come in my life. Lléname una vez más. Fill me one more time. Bautízame con poder. Baptize me with power. Dame la unción. Give me the anointing. Lo recibo, Señor. I receive it, Lord. Lo recibo, Señor. I receive it, Lord. Quiero hoy experimentar. I want today to experience un encuentro, an encounter con la persona del Espíritu Santo. With the person of the Holy Spirit. More, 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 more. Recibe. Más, Señor, más, más. More, Lord. More, más. more. Lo anhelamos. We want it. Anhelamos tu poder, Señor. We desire your power, Lord. Anhelamos tu gloria en esta tierra. We want your glory on this earth. Queremos ver cultos gloriosos. We want to see fire of services. Queremos ver la gloria de Dios en esta generación. We want to see God's glory in this generation. Sigan orando, algo está pasando Keep aquí. Praying. Something is happening right here, right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. More. More from the Holy Spirit. More. De la cabeza hasta la planta de los pies. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. More, 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 more. It's, it's given to you. Te lo está dando ahora. God is giving it to you now. Allí donde está con un corazón sediento y hambriento. Right there where you are with a thirsty and hungry heart. Dígale Señor otra vez. Say to the Lord, Lord, one more time. Hazlo una vez más. Do it one more time. Do it one more time in my life. Do it. Vamos, keep praying. Do it one more time. Do it one more time. I need it. I need it. I know that there is, there is more. I know there is more. I want more. I want more. I want more. More, 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 more for this generation. More, more, more. Release, release. Release the power of God, Lord. Release the power of God, Lord. More. More, more, more. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. Yes, Lord. Llénalos, Señor. Llénalos. Fill them, Lord. Fill them. Llénalos. Fill them. Allá atrás. Right in the back. Ahí atrás algo está pasando allí. In the back something is happening there. Algo está pasando en tu vida ahora. Ahí está el poder de Dios. Something is happening in your life. There is the power of God. Ahí está el poder de Dios. There is the power of God. Recíbelo. Receive it. Sopla, Señor. Breathe, Lord. Trae la el el poder de lo alto como en el día de Pentecostés. Bring the power from of high as the day of Pentecost. Sopla sobre este lugar. Breathe upon this place. Sopla sobre este lugar. Breathe upon this place. Todos sean llenos. All of you be filled. Todos sean llenos. All be filled. Vamos, todos levanten sus manos. Everyone lift up your hands. More fire, more. Yes, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. 
We ask it. We need it. We need it. La tierra seca. On the dry land. Comienza a recibir la lluvia. The rain begins to come down. Comienza tu ministerio, tu vida a ser transformada. Your ministry and your lives begin to be transformed. Dios te lleva a un nuevo tiempo, a una nueva relación con él. God is taking you to a new moment, to a new relationship with him. Recíbelo ahora. Receive it now. Recíbelo ahora. Receive it now. Yes, Lord. We need it. Lord, send. Send revival tonight. I've seen a lot of people around the world receiving the fire of God. And I pray for tonight here in Orlando. Vamos, levante sus manos. Algo está a punto de pasar. Come on, lift up your hands. Something is yet about to happen. I feel it. Something is. Yes. It's your prayer, Lord. Do it with me. Do it with me. Do it. Give me to me. Open the heaven for me. Oh, yes. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Receive it. Recibe fuego de Dios, 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 more, 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 más, 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 more, más. More, 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 más, 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 más. More, 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 more. Señor, oramos por multitudes. Lord, we pray for the multitude. Estadios que se llenen. Stadiums fill. Una generación que ame tu presencia. With a generation that will love your presence. Una generación que reconozca a Jesús hoy. A generation that recognizes Jesus now. Today, we want the Holy Spirit today. Today, hoy, recibelo ahora, ahora. Today, right now, receive it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, keep praying. In the name of Jesus, keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Do it one more time, Lord. Keep praying. Keep praying. Thank you, Lord. Touch them. Llénalos, Señor. Fill them, Lord. Dales el fuego de Dios. Given the fire of God. Dales la impartición del cielo. Given the impartation from heaven. Que el poder de Dios descienda sobre ellos that ahora. The power of God descends upon them now. Ahora, Señor. Now, Lord. Ahora lo recibo. Now I receive it. Lo recibo, lo recibimos. I receive it. We receive it. Lo recibimos. We receive it. Lo recibimos. We receive it. Lo recibimos. We receive it. En el nombre de Jesús. In the name of Jesus. En el nombre de Jesús. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying. Whoa.
keep praying. Sheba Ketema. Possess me, God. Just possess me, God. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You're the only one found worthy. So here we are, Lord. Take over, Lord. Just take over, Lord. Namasoi, Jesus, take over, Lord. Jesus, we go low, 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 low. We go low, 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 low. We go so low, and we say, Oh God, here, Shataroi, come, come and have mercy on us. Come and fill, Lord, fresh, 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 fresh. Hey, more, Lord. Holy. First Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. We want to honor you, Lord. Here we are, Lord. We're little. We're just little laid down, little laid down people here in in Florida, God. Holy. You can do anything, Lord. You can do anything with anyone. You're God and you can do anything with anyone. Lord, I can't, I can't pray, hey, this prayer for anyone else. But I pray, Lord, pick me up like a paintbrush. Pick me up like a paintbrush, God. Paint. Just paint a picture, Jesus. Pick me up like a paintbrush, God. Pick me up like a paintbrush, God. Let your glory flow, holy, in us and through us. We want to be fully yielded. Shiana Masse. Shiana Masse. Shiana Masse. Oh, you can have more of God. He just, He just wants more of you. He wants all of you. He wants to inconvenience you. He wants to totally stretch you and inconvenience you. Hey, and take your life over. He wants to shine through you. wants to shine through you. But he says um, through Apostle Paul,
call. We need to understand that our lives, our bodies, are a temple of the Holy Spirit. who we have received from God, now you are not your own. You are bought at a price. The blood, the blood, the beautiful blood of Jesus bought us. The beautiful, beautiful blood of Jesus bought us. Therefore, honor God with your body. to just turn everything totally completely over just totally completely over <laughs> so many have just said yes 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 but there is a time of surrender tonight even more surrender tonight than we've ever known it's true we can have more of God do you want more of God I'm just, I'm always hungry. I'm hungry for fresh bread. I'm thirsty for fresh bread. <laughs> I want to start with, a, with an impression that I had. Is that okay? A powerful impression. You can stand, you can sit, you can run, you can cartwheel whatever, however you feel led to receive. But I, I had this impression from the Lord that really, really changed my life. It just completely undid me. And at this time when, when I was undone by Him, I had a response that wasn't um, the right response to have in any church, in any meeting. Because when I was taken up into this presence of God and, and He flattened me, now often I don't I need to get knocked down. I just go flat down. I just, I just like live flat down. I just live that way. I've got to live flat down, lay down, lower still, lower still. But at that time, these very big evangelists, they were really big and they had matching clothes on. I always said I'd never wear matching clothes with my husband. We've been married 42 years. And we said to each other we would never wear matching clothes because that was just ridiculous. And a few days ago, our oldest son, our oldest adopted son got married and we wore matching clothes because our son asked us to wear them. And because our son asked us to wear them and gave us the material, and it was bright red, and it had all kinds of, um, it's couple on a material. Anyway, we, we, were, we were rocking it in these matching clothes. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I said I'd never do that. I said, I'd never wear matching clothes. Ah, and here we are looking like this, so ridiculous. But it didn't matter because my son was getting married. And it wasn't about us. And nobody cared about what we were wearing. It was all about our son. Because our son was marrying his bride and he had waited for her and longed for her and he wanted her and he had prayed for her and fasted for her. And here it is, it's his day. Sometimes we're worried about what we look like or how people perceive us. Holy! When it's all about... The sun. It's all about the sun. It's all about the beauty of Jesus. Well, I was in this meeting and I was flat down 
yet again, flat down on my face, and I saw multitudes of people, way more than I'm seeing now, just multitudes of people. And, and I, was, I, I was very concerned about it because I did not want to have to feed them. And I heard the Lord say, give them something to eat. And, and I screamed out, no! think we're just all yielded every time, all the time, kumbaya. <laughs> but I didn't feel yielded. I felt tired. I didn't feel like just saying, yeah, let's go for it. Let's feed the multitudes. I just felt tired. And I just, I didn't want to see them. And so I, I screamed a little louder, no, I'm making it very clear like I did with the matching outfits, <laughs> that I am not interested in seeing this. And at the time we were feeding this small little group, like 320 people a day. <laughs> it makes me laugh now. But at the time it was overwhelming until I saw the eyes of Jesus. <laughs> it's just, and I, that was an impression, if you're worried by the word vision. An impression. Hey! And I looked into his eyes, and that's what shifted everything. It's like, what do you do? What do you do if you got to wear the matching outfit? What do you do when you see the eyes of Jesus? What do you do when you see the beauty of Jesus? The beauty of Jesus rips the no out of you. Hey, the beauty of Christ rips the no out of you, and all you have left is a yes cry. All you have left is a yes cry. And at the same time, there's this daily laying down. There's this daily laying it all down, laying it all down, laying it all down. And, I, and sometimes I'm like, Lord, I thought I've already laid it all down. And then my flesh starts to crawl up again. And he puts me on the wheel. So nice. You're on the wheels, kind of like that music, you know. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. And then bash. In love, he just smashes you. It's in great love. But he just like, bam. And he starts pulling stuff out. And you're like, ow. I don't like that. I thought I was already a vessel fit for your use. And you're just like. And then, and you're dizzy sometimes. Like, why am I being twisted around, turned around, and I thought I was full of your presence, and now I'm just feeling like a clay pot that's shattered. And you yield again. You just yield again, and then you yield again, and you yield again, and you just keep yielding again. He gave me his flesh in this impression and it turned into bread. And I gave it to the children. And he said, I died that there would always be enough. And he gave me his cup. And it was a cup of suffering and joy. Holy. And he asked me to drink it. And he's asking you to drink it too. It's a cup of suffering and joy. You will carry his glory if, if you fellowship in his suffering. If you see what he sees, then there will be a yes in your heart. Your body is not your own. So I'm going to go to a story of a young woman in the Bible who found out that her body was not her own. 
It's in the sixth month. It comes from the book of Luke. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. Do you recognize this story? To a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. Oh, we all, you like being favored, don't you? You, you, want, you want Claudio to lay hands on you, don't you? He's laid hands on me a bunch of times. Oh, I'm ready again. <laughs> Favor is an awesome thing. Favor is a beautiful thing. But <laughs> you better have the right response. Yes. So here's the angel. And people, I mean, I look funny doing it, but imagine this massive angel, Gabriel. She's freaked out. Whenever God really shows up, you're freaked out. It's not like, whatever, I just go up and down, up and down, frequent pass, up and down, up to heavens, down here. Here's my free pass, VIP. Come on. If you, <laughs> if you're really going and you're really seeing him and he's really there, you're freaked out. It is not just a, ah, You're seriously feeling this. Well, we all say, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to be fa favor of God, favor of God. We hear about favor of God like, like a smorgasbord, like a buffet. Just favor here, favor there, favor, favor, favor. You're all favored, favor, favor, favor. So sweet deal. What happened when the favor of God came on that little woman? <laughs> oh, hooray. Hooray for favor. Hooray for favor. The angel's saying, favor, favor's on you. You're so, you're so highly favored. The Lord's with you. Mary was greatly troubled. It's a really good response. You want the favor of God. You want God to crash in on you. You want to say, this body, myself, I'm not my own. I'm not my own. Favor God. And then, ooh, ooh, and then in love, he'll pick you up. Yeah, yeah, in love. Oh, love, love, lovey-dovey. Yes, there's a lot of lovey-dovey in God. But there's also a holy, 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 holy. Your life is not your own. You've been bought with a price. You don't get to choose anymore. This freaks out people, especially in the West. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna have a confession. You know, I, I don't live where y'all live. I live in Africa, in northern Mozambique, in a war zone. So, hey, we don't have the same, not everything's the same. It's just not the same. It's not at all the same. Nothing's the same. It's all different. But it's all glorious. Well, no, something's the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> Jesus is the same. So, but, but in the natural, it's a little bit, it's a little different. It's a different deal. It's a different place. It's a different way. It's a different thing. And, and somehow they don't seem to have as much uh, problem with control because cyclones come and people come, mean people, and burn down things. And uh, crops fail. And there's all kinds of things so out of our control that we are not really big on trying to fix, control everything. For years in the West, when I first started preaching in the West with a microphone, because I preached since I was 16 with no microphone, 
<laughs> I still preach four or five days a week in the dirt with no microphone. <laughs> I know you don't understand that, but I just want to be real with you. <laughs> I'm just in the dirt, loving the poor, no microphone. But then sometimes he asks me to come here and they give me one. <laughs> it's all good. So <laughs> for years in the West, I couldn't get up. God would knock me out. I was ready to get knocked out here because Claudio was going to lay hands on me. And I thought, okay, that's it. I'll just be down. Whoa, oh, that's all you'll get. And that happened to me for years. I would just be out, knocked out in the spirit. And I'd say things like, whoa. And, and they'd ask me to come back and speak again. And it's like, I didn't say anything. And then my flesh started to get involved. It was like my flesh was getting involved. And I'm like, I, I, I could say something. And, and, and I went to this meeting, a big meeting somewhere. And they, uh, you know, you need to use the restroom sometimes if you're a human being. And so I went to the restroom and the people in the restroom did not think, I don't know, they were just not thinking who might be in there. I happened to be in there. And uh, they said, they invited that weird woman, that weird, strange woman, Heidi Baker. They always say my last name. I don't know why. But, um, um, and she just, all she's going to do is just lay on the floor there and say, whoa and ho. <laughs> and I was offended. I got so offended that I lifted my feet up. You know, I didn't want them to see my shoes. In case they recognized them. I lift them up there and I wait till these women leave. I do not want them seeing me there. And I'm like, watch out, baby. I can preach. I, I can preach. I got a PhD in systematic theology and I can preach. And I'm going to go and I'm going to speed read in the pastor's office and I'm going to fast. I'm going to speed read. I'm going to get notes and quotes. I'm going to go to the pastor's office and I'm going to be anointed and I'm going to get a message from God. So there I went. I said to the pastor, I was like not telling him how offended I was. I was so offended. I was ticked. I'm ticked. I'm like, God, the one thing besides the matching clothes, we had a deal that I was never going to look foolish. That was the other deal. <laughs> Holy. So the pastor says, I don't have an office, but I have this room. And I said, do you have books in there? Do you have theological books in there? I'm fasting and I need your books. And that pastor said, yeah, there are theological books in there. And I mean, I, I pulled them off the shelf and I'm speed reading. Shakaraba, shakaraba, sandaraba, sandara. Shh, praying in tongues, speed reading, fasting. Because I want to give a message from God to these people who think I'm crazy. So I also said, and I'm going to the prayer meeting. The intercession meeting before the meeting that you all have, don't you? He said, uh, oh, sure. Yeah, we'll have one of those. We'll have one of those. But it was a pastor's conference, so nobody came to that. <laughs> so I was there on my face, fasting. I had seven notes, seven pages of notes. My flesh was on fire. I'm down there, got all my notes. I'm, I'm down there. Bless the notes, Lord. Bless the message. Let it be so full of glory. I really studied. The Lord rebuked me. He said, do you want to go backwards?
I don't think so. <laughs> but I don't want to look foolish, God. Well, what happened was he, uh, holy. Yeah, it is holy. He put his holy glory on me. I was all by myself in the room. Just God and me in the intercessor's room. And just before it came time to speak, they brought some people into the room and they, they said, we heard about you. We heard that sometimes you cannot walk. So we brought four people. I was like, oh God, no. You're certain, no, Lord. So I tried just a little bit of energy that I thought I had left. I tried to wiggle on up. And it was not happening. And these four people, it was a really big meeting. These four people, they weren't gentle at all. One grabbed this arm. They just carried me, bam, 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 and then they tossed me behind the pulpit, and all my notes went flying. They all went flying, and the Lord, the Lord just showed up, and he said, you have to hoe before you go. I'm, I ride horses. You have to stop before you go. Now I'm, I'm, I'm big, I love, I'm not big, I I'm, I'm, didn't finish my sentence. <laughs> I'm big on impartation, I love impartation. But that Mary, this little woman, she is a teenage virgin. She's Jewish, she's a Jewish teenage virgin. And I don't think her family was really that excited about her favor. <laughs> Some of you all just want God's favor. Just bring it on, 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 bring it on. <laughs> Here she is. Rejoice with me. I am highly favored. Rejoice. Can you imagine? There was shame. There were people were not understanding any of it. Her own fiance was like, I'm ditching her until the angel showed up and he got it straight and he found out he had to stay. Do you understand? The favor of the Lord is a frightening thing. And the favor of the Lord is a holy thing. Now, none of us will have the privilege that Mary had. None of us will carry the Son of God in the way she had carried him. But all of us are called to carry the glory of God. We are called to carry the glory of God. We are called to carry the glory of God. We are called to release control, to release... But... The world out there, it's like my body's mine. My life's mine. My body's mine. My money's mine. My choice is mine. Mine, 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 money, mine, mine, mine. I read the word. And it's actually, uh, you do have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice to give yourself fully to God or to live your selfish, entitled, sick, sad life. You can live small in this place or you can go low. You can go so low where you say, Holy Spirit, See, the river flows to the low places. The river flows to the low places. Hey, so when we want Holy Spirit to empower us, we need to go low. And then we go lower still. 
Has anyone here ever had a promise from God? Eight people. That's, that's awesome. It's always good to know what stream we're in. Promises. Promises are, are powerful. But what if the promise is something like, can you imagine Mary going back and telling her mother and father how favored she was? I, I mean, I remember I was, a, I'm from a Bohemian Ivy League family and from Laguna Beach. And uh, they weren't amused when I called them from the Indian reservation where I was born again and uh, the Pentecostal Holiness Church where I was filled with Holy Spirit. I became a holy roller on day two. I rolled up, I rolled down. I rolled up, I rolled down. If there had been chandeliers, I would have grabbed them and swung. I was so excited about God, and now I'm, now I'm, I'm calm, right? Calm. I was so excited that I called my parents and I said, I'm saved. I got a southern accent suddenly. I'm saved. Holy Ghost filled me. And they were not amused. They said, we'll get a psychiatrist for you. That's called a cult. You need to get on a plane and come home. I said, ferals never quit. That's 16-year-old rebellion served me well that moment. I said, no, I'm not coming home. I'm serving God. I'm serving God. When I got home, everybody rejected me. All my friends, ever I was a ballerina. The church, first thing they told me was, you cannot dance. So I laid my toe shoes down. Best thing I ever did. He did give them back later. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. But I needed to die. Hey, dying's a good thing. My parents didn't understand. I'm called to be a minister and a missionary. I'm like, what? You're just insane. But we will get help. It took about 30 years, but both my parents got powerfully born again. Spirit-filled, born again. Lovers of Jesus, my atheist aunts got born again. My sister, she used to blow pot smoke in my face after I was born again. She'd say, <sighs> and she'd just say, get, get high. I said, I'm, I'm so high, you have no idea. I so am so high in him. I'm so filled with him. I don't want any stuff that you have. And she was like, she was angry. And then when she finally got to her lowest place, a second divorce, and she, she was just in this horrible space and she was cussing like a snake, cussing like a snake. And she was screaming and cussing and saying how much she hated me. And all I knew to do was hold her in my arms and rock her like a baby. I just held her in my arms and I rocked her like a baby. I said, I love you. I will always love you. I will never stop loving you because Jesus loves you and Jesus loves me. And I watched my sister just crumble. She's now spirit-filled, born again, lover of Jesus. Hey! It it doesn't always happen overnight. They don't always understand overnight. They're not going to understand what happens to you tonight if you get truly yielded. Mary was told, I love this. This is just funny. Do not be afraid, Mary. (laughs) Don't be afraid, sweetie. You've found favor with God. And you will be with child and give birth to a son. And you're to give him the name Jesus, the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of the father David, of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. (laughs) Don't be afraid though. No fear. No fear, sweetie. No fear. Come on. She was afraid 
rightly so. When God seriously gets a hold of your life and you seriously yield your life to God, there has to be that holy fear. The holy fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't have the holy fear of the Lord, you probably do not know him. Hey, because he's holy. He's holy and he is sovereign. And he's looking for lovers who will yield. Hey, he's looking for lovers who will yield and will turn themselves fully, totally, utterly over to him. Where they will no longer say, my life's my own. Please don't stretch me. Can you imagine what was going on with that little teenage Jewish girl? She cannot make this happen. She cannot make this happen. She cannot cause the Son of God to be birthed through her life. None of it was possible in the natural. None of it. None of it. The calling of God on our lives is not possible for us to fulfill them in our flesh. Our flesh literally has to die. And I believe as she was being stretched, her flesh is dying and dying and dying and dying. And people are talking and talking and talking and talking. I remember hearing God tell me to do something in my life that was so ridiculously impossible that I, when it happened, I sucked water. I was, I was snorkeling. I snucked water. Snucked. Not, that's not English. I sucked water into my snorkel. <laughs> I was in a peaceful place with the Lord, looking at his beauty, swimming out there in the ocean, looking at all the coral and the fish. Hallelujah. Loving my time with Jesus because people chase me. And so when I swim fast so I could get past the people and I'm just out there past the people. And I'm swimming and having a glorious time. And the Lord said, build a university. <gasps> what? Do what? <laughs> Another, I, I had a few things. I, I told the Lord I didn't want to ever look foolish. Didn't want people to know certain things. I had a big, dark, dark, dark secret in my life. I was severely disabled. Severely, I was always in the dummy class. I had severe dyslexia. Every time if I was asked to spell people, I couldn't spell it. I couldn't even spell rat. I was so severely disabled that I learned to dance because I was going to find a way. Do you understand? When the Lord asks somebody to do something that they can do fully and they're just so amazing, they're just amazing. I hear that all the time. You're just amazing to people saying to each other, you're amazing, you're awesome, awesome and amazing. Everybody's awesome and amazing because we are the children of God. So we are awesome and amazing, but we're also pitiful and we're also small and we're also little and we also need to die for Jesus to fully receive all the glory and all the beauty that he deserves through our little lives laid down. So I said, okay, well, there's not a single person on the face of the planet I was told I couldn't even go to vocational school, let alone university. Do you see why I was having trouble when I looked foolish in front of y'all for like 15 years and counting? No, it's been 40, but only since I started speaking, so 28 with the microphone. I didn't want to look foolish. I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to fail, but I somehow knew enough to get up and out of that water and take my bucket bath and get to the village of joy. That's what I did. I got up, got out, and I walked to the village of joy. Well, I walked to my truck. And it took me to the village of joy. You should always be accurate. 
I walked to my truck, took me to the village of joy, and I drove up the hill and I, I took a stick. I took a bamboo stick. And I took this stick and I just did this. Around an imbondera tree, I just took a big stick and I heard God, you see, so I took a stick. Because if you hear God, you better just do something. Something, something to say that your yes actually meant yes. So I took a stick, it's all I had. I didn't have a brick. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a master plan. I didn't have a fund. I had a stick. So I took my stick and I pushed my stick around this big, huge tree. And then I looked around and there's kids everywhere because it's Mozambique and it's us. So I said, who wants to go to first grade? <laughs> And all these kids started showing up. They just ran and they sat in the dirt and they, they actually believed that I could do something. It was wild. I, I, I had spell check now and God healed my brain, by the way. Whoa, he healed my brain in a healing meeting. Yeah, woo, woo. That's why I could speed read, woo, woo. Thank you, Jesus. So he rewired my brain, that was really cool. Um, so. I'm down there and I could spell cat in Portuguese and mouse and people. I could spell it now. So I took my stick and I started writing letters in the dirt. And I said, we're gonna, we're gonna have a first grade. We're starting first grade, this is first grade. That was almost 19 years ago. Holy is the lamb, now we have the best primary schools and secondary schools in the nation. Thank you, Jesus. Because he is king and he's looking, he's looking for lovers who will yield and get their eyes off of themselves and their own abilities and their own natural talents and get their eyes fixed on the beauty of Christ and lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. Been building this university, seriously. If you think of, what if you were pregnant, sweetheart? I can see your beautiful condition. You could have the baby tonight. And uh, if, if that happened, that you were, you were in this beautiful condition for 18 years, it would be kind of concerning, would it not? Well, that's how long I've been with this promise. Because the Lord puts a promise in you. You, you have some choices now. You nurture that child. You bless that child. You eat properly for that child. You don't put poison in your body for the sake of that child. You do many things to bless that child that God has blessed you with. Because your body's actually not your own. If you turned it over to the king. Your body's not your own, and so you care for that child with all that is within you. When God himself wants to overshadow you as a person, there are some responsibilities. You are not in control. You cannot make it happen. You cannot birth the vision. You cannot work your way up, strive your way up, push your way up, scream your way up, fast your way up. You can't, but he can. He can do whatever he wants to do through anybody laid down. Anybody laid down, hallelujah. That's exciting. So here I am, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, getting a little, I'm getting a little worn out by this 18 year vision. I'm tired of trying to make this thing, I don't know, I'm just tired. And then I lay down again. I lay down again, I'm on my face again, and I say, Jesus, 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 it's all about you, it's not about me, whatever you have for my little life, I'll just yield it. And then, while you're, you're thinking that it can't get any harder, a war breaks out, and they start to burn 
your buildings and they start to burn your churches and they start to crucify your friends. This is my world right now, beloved of God. This is not my vision or not my dream. This is my world right now where a group of people called Al Shabaab are burning and torturing my friends, my pastors, the people that I work with and love. And what is our response to that? We could just say, well, you know, I guess the vision's not going to happen because you can't have a university in a war zone and we're just, um, we need to leave because it's just too dangerous. And all I know is the Lord just says, this is your greatest opportunity in the midst of the challenging times in this world. And believe me, in love, I'm going to tell you, beautiful Western bride, your, your world's going to shake more than you've ever seen it shake before. And you're going to remember these stories because God himself will, if you will lay your life down, God himself will take you and use you as his feet and his hands, and his mouth, and his heart, because he's looking for laid down lovers. And he will multiply food for you. He'll heal the lepers. He'll raise the dead. He'll cleanse the broken. He'll set the people free, because God is a God who's alive. And he sees, and he feels, and he moves, and he's looking for lovers who will yield. Show who will yield to him. Holy. This, this little woman... In the word, she yielded. She yielded. And she asked questions. You are allowed holy. <laughs> oh, that's just, I used to wonder about that. Now I just yield to that. Holy. Holy Spirit. She asked when when she was explaining the fact that she was not capable of carrying this child, this son of God, this one who would reign over the house of Jacob forever, his kingdom would have no, no end. She, she did not understand with her mind. And she explained to the angel that she was a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Hey, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One born will be called the Son of God. And even Elizabeth, I love this part. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is now in her sixth month. Holy Spirit. Do you want Holy Spirit to overshadow you? Do you want, will you carry the favor to full term? Or will you abort? Your generation, your generation has often wanted easy and quick and painless and me. Your generation has been a generation that is said, if I'm inconvenienced by the baby, I'll just get rid of it. I'll just get rid of it. I don't want to be stretched. I don't want to be ridiculed. I want to do it my way. And the Lord is wooing us. He's wooing us to this place where we would care for whatever he places in us and we would carry it to full term. He, we would carry the promises of God. We would carry the life of holiness and intimacy in the face of a crazy dying world. My 
beautiful brothers right now. They are my teachers. They are all Mozambicans. They are my teachers. They, they have all lost everything in the natural. Their homes have all been burned to the ground. Their churches have all been burned to the ground. They have lost their loved ones. One of my most anointed dear pastors, four and a half year old was, was beheaded. Do you understand? I'm not coming to you with a fluffy little message. I'm coming to you from a place where I watch these young men and women laying their life down to the full degree at saying it doesn't matter. You know what they, they say with, when you just, we just hang out, like y'all hang out, we hang out. We just hang out mostly in the, in the dirt. We sit and we talk. We do have food. Thank you, Jesus. We have a lot of food. A whole lot of food. We're feeding over 43,000 people every single day. That's, that's the grace of God. That's food. And we have spiritual food, the Word of God. And we give them the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. And these men and women are tireless. Why? Because they're in love. And they do nothing else. Nothing else matters. This is, do you, do you want to hear the end of this? And they're going to come worship or, or leave. I'm not sure which. But it's all Okay, because sleep works as well. And I have a clock and I can see it. And I understand it tonight, which is a very big miracle. <laughs> hey, these men were sitting under a, you know, not under anything. We're just sitting out, well, kind of a little bush. And we're talking. And they, they call me mama and they're like, mama, you know, we have... We've lost, we've lost children. We've lost all our buildings. We've lost our homes. They've burned it. Al-Shabaab burned it all. But mama, they can never burn Jesus out of our hearts. They can never burn Jesus out of our hearts. And all they wanna do I I'm, I'm feel so grateful to be here right now because I can tell you their story. All they want to do is carry this glorious gospel out to the lost, to the broken, to the dying, to the sick. They're not concerned about how inconvenient it is. Some of them had 15 churches. Some of them had seven churches. Some of them had incredible anointings that people would just be wow and whoa and awesome. They carry huge sacks of rice and beans. They carry oil and rice and beans. And they take turns. We all take turns, about 50 of us, three, four, five days a week, depending on the week. We just sit in little groups. All our buildings are closed. We, we don't have any buildings open, <laughs> except once in a while the government changes their mind and we can have a small group somewhere with open air. But it doesn't stop us because you cannot stop lovers. You cannot stop lovers. Lovers cannot be stopped. We are lovers of God. And once you've been shaken to that point, these guys, they don't care. They're like, hey, if we go, we go. We know eternity's real. We know eternity's real. And I don't want you to feel sorry for them. And I don't want you to feel sorry for me because we feel like the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we are never, ever been in such a joyful place on this entire, almost 30 years in the nation, I've never seen more people running to Jesus. I've never seen the most resistant people of other faiths bowing their knees to the king. Shehaz, all they want are Bibles. They want the word of God, the word of God, audio Bibles. There, it's just so glorious. So I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how hot it is. I don't care how many death threats there are. I don't care how crazy it seems because Jesus is worthy of it all. 
Jesus is worthy of it all. Oh, Rabbi Shaya, let's get to this yielded place. And I'm going to have you stand, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, Mary heard. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Are you ready to be overshadowed? Often we want the touch from God. We want the touch. We want the power. We want the touch. We want the impartation. We want that, that boom, sock you in your gut kind of touch. I love, I love that touch. I love that touch, but somehow tonight the Lord orchestrated it that we weren't even going to be able to call you forward. That could be frustrating or glorious. I choose to believe it's glorious. Hey! Because what God wants to do as he overshadows you all over this place is cause there to be so much love inside your heart for the one who is worthy, Jesus, that you would nurture that which he places inside of you. You see, I received a mighty calling of God on my life at the age of 16. Jesus kissed my hand, oil ran down my arm. He called me to marry him as he calls all of us to marry him. And I gave my life to another, and I've never dreamt of taking it back. But it has not always been easy. You know, it's easier to be stoned and beaten than it is to be mocked and ridiculed by people who are supposed to be your family. It's easier to be stoned by those who you know don't understand than it is for people to assume that you're making up things when they've never stepped into your world. But even those things will not deter me because I'm in love. And I feel like tonight the Lord wants to overshadow those who are willing to yield in a way where they will They'll be willing to yield to that which God places in them day in and day out, whether they're hungry, thirsty, tired, ridiculed, mocked, jobless, or soaring with the best job on the planet. I believe he's looking for a yielded group of lovers who don't care what it costs, who don't care what it costs to carry whatever he puts inside of them. They would just say yes. So let's just lift our hands now. And in a moment, we're going to find a place. More Lord, more Lord, more Lord. Holy Spirit, Shiana Messiah, come, come, Holy Spirit. Come upon your yielded lovers. Come upon your yielded lovers and let them be stretched. Let them be stretched and inconvenienced. Lord, I pray for great grace and mercy. And as I was preparing for this meeting, I heard the Lord say he's a God of the second chance and a God of the third chance and a God of the fourth chance and a God of the fifth chance and a God of the sixth chance and a seventh and the eighth and the ninth and the tenth. He keeps coming with his grace and his mercy and he keeps coming to those who will yet yield yet again 
But will there be something inside of you this time that says, Lord, I don't care how inconvenienced I am. I don't care what the price will be. Oh, Lord, I choose to say my body's not my own. My will is not my own. My goals are not my own. And now, Shiana Messiah, I just know that there's something about this yielded place. And I, I just want you to find a place by your chair just to, just to get low. It's like Brother Yoon. He's one of my favorite people on the planet. Joyful, joyful, joyful man. Been through more torture than anyone I know, even in the war zone. And yet he carries incredible joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. So here we are. And I, I want you to just kneel, find a place to go low, go low, go low, go low. Shira Rabba, go low. And if this is your response, then there's going to be a yes cry in this place through his yielded lovers. Oh, he's saying, Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Oh, God is calling us to be carriers of his glory to carry His love and His mercy and His power and His beauty and His healing and His presence to a lost and dying world and to be the hands and feet of Jesus to the body and to love one another with a radical love that the world has yet not seen. Oh, that we would nurture that which God places within us, that we would nurture the body, that we would nurture this beautiful body of Christ, that we would speak kindly and walk softly on the earth. Even those who are old, even those who have failed, even those who have failed over and over again, the Lord in His mercy says, I'll come and overshadow you again. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to do what I can't do, to do what I can't do. Lord, just come overshadow him, overshadow him, overshadow him, overshadow him. Come Holy Spirit, overshadow your people. Show, come with your heavy, weighty glory. Come with your heavy, weighty glory. Lord, oh, Shana Messiah, pray that every excuse, that every part of the flesh that tries to rise up would just be laid low tonight. God, that you would, you would literally, literally, literally come with the power of your presence and overshadow your people. What was her response? I am the Lord's servants. I am the Lord's servants. If that's your response, then tell him, just tell the Lord himself, I am, I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's servant. Lord, it's a mystery that you would wanna use me. It's a mystery, Lord, that you would go so low that you would be born in a stable, that you would be born, that you would come in even into the womb of a woman, that you would be nursed at your mother, adopted mother's breast, but you came and you showed us how to go low. You showed us how to go so low. And you came as we heard from our dear brother. You came, we heard from Claudio. You came and you didn't even do the miracle until you were totally filled with Holy Spirit. So how 
how can we mere human beings think that we can do anything in our own flesh? Lord, rip the flesh out of me. Rip the flesh out of me. This is what I feel. We pray first now. Pray it, pray it, pray it. Rip the flesh out of me, Lord. Go ahead. Rip the flesh out of me, God. Rip my own self-satisfying traits out of me, God. Rip the place where I'm not willing to be inconvenienced. Rip the entitlement out of me, God, and fill me with your spirit. Lord, take me into the depths of your love again. Oh, Rabba, Sheikha Rabba. Oh, Lord, be it unto me. Be it unto me. Be it unto me. Be it unto me. Now, I'm just, all I know to do right now is to lay down and to trust that God's going to do whatever He wants to do with no hype. No hype. He's looking for laid down lovers who would die to their flesh and carry his glory. Will that one be you?